All right, it's official. This is the absolute last laser cutter review that I'm ever going to do. Now let's talk about why. Today I'm going to talk about this Atomstack A70 Max, which Atomstack sent me recently to have me put through the paces. Um, now, before I go any further, Atomstack did send it to me, but I'm not under contract with them. There's no expectation for a positive review. They just sent it to me and they literally just said, would you like to review it on your channel? So, always one to give something new a shot and seeing that this particular type of laser engraver is something that fits well in my workshop, I decided to give it a shot. Now, why does it fit well in my workshop? Uh, I'm more of a woodworker and I've got a couple of small laser engravers to complete some tasks, but I don't do a lot of laser cutting. I don't do a lot of things that uh, CO2 lasers are really meant to do. So I don't have the need to spend five to $10,000 for uh, a CO2 or a fiber laser. It's just not the type of work that I do, but I do a lot of engraving. And in my area, which is central Kentucky, I routinely get requests to engrave bourbon barrel lids, signs, and that kind of thing. Well, with my smaller laser engraver, which is an X tool that I keep in my office, I can only engrave up to about 400 millimeters, which is roughly around 15 inches. Uh, bourbon barrel lids, which is something that's popular in my area and I do a lot of work with, uh, require a larger area to engrave. So I've really not been able to do a lot of those. But this opens up a lot of new opportunities for me to be able to engrave larger pieces of equipment on a budget. So with that said, let's go ahead and dig right into it. Now, I did write down some notes, so I am gonna be glancing down at this, but these are just features um, and my opinions of this particular cutter. So to begin with, they do have two different models. There's the A70 Pro and the A70 Max. The A70 Pro is still a 70 watt laser. That's right, I said that. A 70 watt laser, but it's uh, the typical size, 400 by 450 millimeters. So it's a smaller cutting area. So for most people, that's probably gonna be a good fit. Um, that one retails for $16.99, whereas the A70 Max, which is what this one is, retails for $19.99. Now it does cut, they advertise, I didn't test this out, but they did advertise that it cuts up to 400 millimeters per second. So you can do some incredibly fast cutting and engraving on the, with this particular piece of equipment. Uh, also, they advertise that it has a, an engraving accuracy of up to 0 .001 millimeters. Now, part of that's going to require that you're pretty good with light burn or laser gerbil or your software of choice when it comes to designing it and fine tuning those things. I typically don't get into those fine tuned types of uh, photorealistic engravings, so I didn't test that out. Now, as the name suggests, it is a 70 watt laser. Uh, they advertise on their website and they compare it to a CO2 type of a laser. Now, I don't do any work with CO2, so I'm not really qualified to make that comparison. Uh, if you really wanna see how it stacks up uh, with a CO2 laser, there are several other uh, reviews out there. I haven't seen many reviews on this particular one, the Max, but there are several reviews on the Pro. And to my understanding, the only real difference between the Pro and the Max are the dimensions. So I chose this not because of the power, but because of the dimensions. So let's talk about some of the features that are built in with this piece of equipment. Uh, number one, um, it does have two modes. It has a 35 watt mode and a 70 watt mode. As I already said, I don't have the need to do a lot of cutting, so I will probably use it in 35 watt mode most of the time. And what I found in actually putting this through the paces is that 70, the 70 watt mode was a bit too um, powerful for me. Uh, I caught a lot of things on flat fire. I had that flame detection go off several times and that's not a criticism of the equipment. That's a criticism of the user uh, and me not being experienced enough with working with that powerful of a laser. So I had to, to learn to back things off a little bit. Next, it does have a um, one click, one button autofocus, which you'll see right here. It also comes with this setup block, which will sit right underneath there. 
and it does have a detection so that it will automatically set the uh, proper depth, whether you're wanting to engrave, whether you're wanting to cut materials less than 20 millimeters or materials greater than 20 millimeters. Next, it does have built-in air assist. And the thing that I thought was most handy about the air assist is that the air assist is already fed through. So you don't have to have an extra line that you have to worry about getting out of the way. It's already fed through with the other lines. So it's already out of the way. And the final feature that I really liked is the offline mode. You can just design your work in Lightburn or Laser Gerbil or your design software of choice, generate the G code and save it to a jump drive and just plug it in right here. And along with offline mode, let's talk about one other feature. Let me uh, turn it on real quick so you can see this. It does have a touch screen so that you can load your project and then manually adjust as you need to. I'll turn that off so it doesn't make any noise. One of the negatives, um, I didn't see any documentation that suggested that it had uh, Wi-Fi access. And so for a lot of people, that's going to be um, a, uh, a negative. For me, it's not a big deal. Um, I keep this down in my basement and my Wi-Fi signal is not that good. And I live out in the country, so my Internet connection is not that great anyway. All right, next, let's talk about a couple of the safety features. And there's not anything radically different that I saw with the safety features in this piece of equipment over some other similar types of desktop hobbyist lasers. But the two main features that I did see were, number one, it does have tilt detection. But the tilt detection is handy. I don't know why you would be picking it up while it's running. Um, but in case maybe you hit your table and you knock it off, or if you have a cat and the cat jumps on it, now, that raises the question, why are you letting your cat run around in your shop when you have a laser cutter cutting? Um, that just seems like somebody who wants a dead cat, but is what it is. Maybe that's you. I don't know. Um, but it does have tilt detection, so it will stop and it will sound an alarm if it does tilt. And I did test that out and it works. It also has flame detection. And uh, I tested that out unintentionally, trying to run it at the 70 watt mode and running it too slow, uh, running it too powerfully um, and not having those settings dialed in. I set off that flame detection quite a few times. So it's good to know it works. Trust me, it works. I found out. Now let's talk about my experiences with this particular piece of equipment. Uh, number one, when it comes to engraving, um, I thought I did an excellent job with engraving. Um, there are the two modes. The 35 watt is meant more for engraving, whereas the 70 watt is meant more for cutting. So I turned it up to the 35 watt mode and it engraved like a champ. It did a really good job at a variety of different settings. Um, one thing that I like about one that's this powerful being 35 watts, even at 35 watts, you could turn those settings up enough so that it would actually engrave deep. I got it as deep as 16th of an inch or more without really even trying to see how deep I could go. Um, and, uh, that was great because then uh, if you like, you can actually put a little bit of epoxy down in there. Uh, you can put paint in there and sand off the way that you might do it with a CNC. If you've ever seen any of the painted or epoxy projects that I've done on my channel, you can actually accomplish some similar things like that with just the engraver on a machine like this. Um, now, that said, that doesn't mean that every engraving that you do is deep like that. It does a lot of shallow engravings. Um, it does a lot of your typical engraving and it does a very good job with it. But having a more powerful machine gives you the opportunity to actually go a little bit deeper if that's what you need. So I love having those features and those abilities even if you might not use them. It's a feature that I'd rather have uh, and maybe not need uh, except on a rare occasion, but not have it and then wish that I did. Okay, now let's talk about the actual cutting. Cutting is where I ran into some problems. Um, and that is really a reflection of me and not a reflection of the uh, cutter. Because I'm not used to working with a 70 watt uh, laser cutter. So when I tried to do some cut, uh, some of my sample cuts, 
even though I was following what I thought were the um, recommended settings, maybe I didn't have everything configured as, as uh, optimally as they could have been in Lightburn, um, but I ended up setting off that flame detection several times and had to go back and redo things and make some adjustments. Um, I also tried some different types of materials that are maybe not that common uh, or that really aren't listed in Adam Stack's list of materials. I did do three quarter inch plywood and I had a little bit of a problem with that, but that could be the density of the plywood uh, and maybe not uh, a reflection of the cutter itself. Uh, when I cut through a uh, three eighths inch walnut, it worked like a champ. When I cut through um, half inch pine, it worked like a champ. It did a great job. Um, but when it got to some of the thicker things, I ended up setting off that alarm more than I really would have liked. Also, it cuts through thin plywood, quarter inch plywood like a champ. It did a great job with that. Okay, now let's talk about just some practical uh, things to consider with something like this. And that is this particular model. If you're interested in this, one of this size, this is probably not the type of laser engraver or cutter that you're gonna keep at your desk because we're talking about something that requires a four foot by four foot or slightly larger footprint. So that is a negative, but I see myself using it enough in my shop and I've got a decent size shop that I can actually fit it. Now I did build this cart, but what I will probably do in the near future is actually build an enclosure on the wall that I can just pull down whenever I need it. And then I can move it up to get it out of the way. Because even though this is something that I will use on a semi-regular basis, it's not going to be a daily thing. Um, I'm more of a woodworker that does some uh, laser engraving and laser cutting on occasion. Next, you do want to have an enclosure and a laser cutter of this size, it's very difficult to find enclosures that are this size. So I'm gonna have to build a custom enclosure for it that does have some uh, smoke ported out. Now I have this right in front of my garage door right now so that I can have a fan going for testing purposes and get that smoke out of there. But when I ran this without any kind of fan going and porting that smoke out, uh, the, it did get some smoke into my shop. Next, let's talk about that laser light. Now I do have this in my shop and while this is running, I'm likely to be doing other things. So that being the case, you want to make sure that you have an enclosure so that you're not staring at the uh, actual laser while it's actually running. While this was running, I was doing some other things in my shop, so I would find that I would catch it out of the corner of my eye, and um, that's not a good thing. You definitely, I don't encourage blindness. It's something that, I don't know how you feel about it, but I'm gonna take a stand, and I'm gonna say I don't wanna be blind any more than I already am. So um, an enclosure really is an important type of a uh, feature that you do need to include into this project. Okay, so now why am I going on record and saying that this is the last laser engraver review that I'm going to do? When I first started this channel, company started reaching out to me, offering me lasers, and I thought it would be fun to, to give them a shot. I've learned quite a bit about them, and every time I get one, I say, okay, this is the last one I'm gonna do. And then I get offered a bigger one and a stronger one. However, at the end of the day, I love woodworking, and the laser engraver or laser cutters that I use are simply tools that are used to enhance woodworking. This is not meant to be a laser business. Um, that said, I enjoy doing these, these types of reviews, but I've got everything that I need in this new laser. I really enjoy it. I really think for a woodworker who just needs a laser cutter or a laser graver to accent their work, this is really a good model for them. The cutting size, the cutting dimensions are great. That's perfect for me. So moving forward, I'm going on record. This is the absolute last laser review that I'm going to do. Anything else that shows up in my email will go strictly in the junk mail. And since you're still here, make sure to check out this video right here, which is my attempt to somewhat success of engraving on acrylic with a diode laser. So hope you enjoyed this and uh, let's get out there and make some stuff.